Well, we're live on, I don't even know what day of the week is it, is it Sunday? <laughs> I think it is Sunday and it's three o'clock. I don't know about you, but I am losing all sense of what day of the week it is. Um, yay, thanks Philippa. <laughs> Glad you could join us. Brilliant. It was very short notice, but I just thought, you know what? I'm going to be making my card this up my pitch this afternoon so why not join everybody hi Jane hope you're well and Stephen hi Sue hope you're all good hi Mary um can you just do me a few little hearts if you can hear me okay I'm taking it that you can but I would just put my volume up yes it is up hi Jeanette hi Elaine oh this is lovely hi Brian Okay, lovely. Thank you. I take it that you can hear me. Hi, Jo. Hi, Sharon. I've really been enjoying your video, Sharon. I have to say your Facebook Live has been brilliant. So I think it's just really important for everybody to do as much as we can for each other. So hi, Deborah. Hi, Tracy. Oh, brilliant. This is lovely. Excellent. Hi, Lane. Oh, that's really lovely, Lane. Hi, Brian. <coughs> I can't tell you. I've been round to see my mum this morning because she's struggling a bit at the moment and uh hi neil that's lovely to see you um if i don't say hi it's not that i haven't noticed you and i will keep going yeah hi hazel um yeah so i pop around to see my mum because she's struggling a bit at the moment and just has no energy she feels totally exhausted so i went round and cooked her a dinner i'm worried because she controls her diabetes by food and i'm wondering if she's not eating properly so I've been round, kept my distance from her and brought back her washing. I've done all the washing, put it out on the line. And what happened? It chucked it down. <laughs> so now I have lovely, really wet washing out on the line for her. But never mind, we'll sort it. Um, yeah, so I hope you've enjoyed seeing the pictures that I've made recently. The first one I did was Hope, which I have here. So that was the first one that I did. Oh, it's back to front though. Okay, I'll show you it properly in a minute. Um, and then I did Faith and then it was Gail that said, oh, you must do, when I did Hope, she said, you must do Faith and Love. So uh, I thought I would. So, oh, hi Di, that's lovely. Hi Gemma. So I'm sorry if I haven't said hello to you, but I do go back and read everything that you post. So please be very vocal and, and share share your comments. It's lovely. So hi Mary, that's brilliant. Happy anniversary, Mary. God, to think what we were doing five years ago on this day. We were out in a, well, afterwards, we went out in a beautiful field. The surroundings were amazing where you got married. So it was a lovely day. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm going to flip you around and I'm going to start making your pictures. But please be very vocal because I do love reading what you put in the comments and everything. And if I can answer any questions, I will do. Hi, Sally. Hi, Pat. In fact, if I put my glasses on, I'd be able to read them so much easier. <laughs> Hi Sandra. Hi Louise. Glad you made it. I'm sorry it was such short notice but I just thought you know what I'm going to go down my cabin and make that picture. Why don't I invite everyone else along as well. So I'm going to flip you around and uh, talk about a few things afterwards as well. I've got little things that I wanted to ask you about. Yes they were beautiful memories Mary. Beautiful. So bear with me a minute. And I have to say my lovely husband spent hours mending my phone holder the other day for me so hopefully let me get you in the right place that's a bit better we're actually going to be working here so I think that'll be fine yeah so he spent hours the other day mending it for me so let's hope it holds out hi Paula hope you're well lovely hope you're feeling much better hi Anne oh it's so lovely that you've all joined us okay look at this a bit of sunshine now on my board typical the sun's come out <laughs> anyway I hope it doesn't put like stop you seeing too well anyway so hi Jane right so I'm going to start off when I do my pictures I usually start with my um tag first of all and color that up hi Sue hi Marilyn so I'm going to take a couple of distressed oxides probably actually I might use a bit of three so I have gathered twigs and vintage photo and ground espresso. I always like a bit of ground espresso because it's that really dark, dark chocolate. So, shall I? I suppose I should show. In case you haven't seen the other pictures, I suppose I should show you what what I made the other day. So, this was the one I made the other day. So this is Hope. 
I really hope I don't have to go outside and put the parasol up so the sun doesn't mess up what you can see. Anyway, so this is using my new um, Fresh Florals stamps and dies. Hi, Wendy. Hi, Angie. Wendy, I'm really sorry that we couldn't do the workshop yesterday, so hopefully this is a little bit of a, a softener. So I'm sure we'll be back at Linda's very soon. So this is using the Fresh Florals stamps and dies and also the lowercase alphabet so I did hope first of all and then lovely Gail posted up saying oh I hope you're going to do faith and love so I'm doing I did faith yesterday hi Tricia hi Sandra so this was faith that I did yesterday and I introduced the blue so just before I came live I've added a couple of blue flowers to hope because they didn't have blue flowers on them before and because I've done wanted to keep the three flowers with the orange the blue and the mustardy color i had to add the blue flowers into the hope so the papers that i'm actually using because lots of you have said you love them i don't know if they're still available but it's the graphic 45 and lost in paradise so you may work oh, it's really bad with all the shadows i am sorry let's get rid of that light because we don't need that today yeah so it's it's lost in paradise which is the name of the pattern papers and they are absolutely beautiful you've got a couple of different patterns in each of the colors but you also get the solid color on the back and it's almost like a bit inky backgrounds it's really nice it's lovely so the yellow one comes with a stripe but again it's not distress but it's just a bit mottledy it's not perfect coloring which i think looks lovely with it so the green one and the green for the leaves and then the blue one with the stripe as well so it's a really lovely pad right so i would like i was saying i usually start off with my tag i'm going to lend this yeah of course absolutely that's why we share ideas i want anyone please feel free take as much as as much or as you little inspiration that you want from it so I am, I hope you can see that, but I am putting some ink down on my glass mat. I have a trusty piece of acetate out of my stamp pack and some water. And I'm just spritzing a little bit of water on here because it acts very differently on the glass mat as to whether I did it on the craft sheet. But for how I'm going to do it, this is absolutely fine. So I lift up some of the ink onto the acetate and then I just lay it down and I might smush it a little bit with my fingers. But just picking up some of that colour just to fill up areas on that tag. You don't have to do it all. It, this is, that's what I love about inky backgrounds. It is completely, nothing is wrong. Hi Doreen, hi Dawn, lovely that you could join us. Sorry about the short notice. Right, so I'm gonna plug my heat tool in and just heat this because I want to put another layer of color on and you must always heat in between the putting the colours on because if you don't you're likely to get muddy cut well muddy colours does it matter but your colours won't lay on top of each other if they're wet so if you dry them in between then the layers they form layers rather than just mixing together so that one hasn't got quite enough water I don't think let's get a bit more water so again picking it up with the acetate and I like to do my backgrounds like this because it means that you can see where you're putting your colour down, where you want some more, if you want some more, until you're happy with how it is. Then I would clean off, when I'm happy, I clean my bit of acetate. I have to say, normally, if all this ink was left, I would have to be inking a few more bits of card, but I will wipe it away today so that we can move on. So then I would heat this so I can dry that layer that I've just done as well. Right, I am re trying to read your comment, Louise, as it's going up as well, but it disappears when the next one comes on. I will read it afterwards and get back to you, but I've Catherine Pruder ink pads and finding them not too good to be used. I think pads are really ones. Yep, I mean, I've done it with Catherine Pooler ink pads as well. You might just need to add a little bit more water with Catherine's. Catherine's are very juicy, um, but it is just a case really of playing around until you're happy and you like how it looks. But yeah, have a go, have another go at um, doing it, but maybe add a little bit more water. Right, so now that I've done my background, 
Then I would take a bit of the ground espresso and I'm going to ink this around the edge. And I still like to use my sponges and I like to do it in the air. I don't, I'm not very good at bringing the ink in this way, like using it off of the mat. I like to do it like, like I say, holding the piece of card. And I feel that I've got much more control over how much ink I actually put on then. So just keep going all the way around. And you can put as much ink or as little ink as you want on this. Hi, Anne. Oh, hi, Annie. Annie from France is watching. That's lovely. Hello, Anne. Brilliant. Hi, Ruth. So when you're happy with how it's looking, got the sort of colour that I want and it mixes, it looks OK with the ones that I've done before. So obviously if you're doing a set of things like that, you want to make sure that you're not making them too different. So make, make sure that you've got them looking similar. OK, so I can put my ink pads away for the minute. So I'm happy with my tag. So then I would probably do my background next. So for this one, I've chosen the blue as a background. What I try to do when I'm planning them, if I just show you this as well, is on the first one, I picked an orange, uh, sorry, a yellow flower, an orange background, and I went with orange words. So on this one, I had a... The blue was the main flower, but I had a yellow background, so I went with yellow words. And so on the one that I'm doing today, the love, I have the blue background and I've got blue words and I've got the orange flower as my main one. The orange, and I'm going to have an orange and a large yellow, actually, as well. Hi, Nova. Lovely that you could join us. So for my background on here... What I've done is stamped my, taken my friend sentiment from my dictionary definitions. And you will notice that with the yellow one, I cut it so the stripes were going um, port, no, landscape. And so on this one, I've cut them portrait so that we've got a little bit of difference when they're sat next to each other or displayed next to each other. So I've put my friend dictionary definition stamp onto the back of my um, block. And I have got my piece of paper in my stamping press. I'm sorry, I'm being very distracted by the comments. I'll stop trying to read them. <laughs> okay, so although I'm not using it as a press, I'm using the stamp on the block, I still like to stamp on the uh, into the stamping press because it's got that lovely cushion. And that way I know, because I'm not very good now, um, I know that when I stamp, I'm going to get a nice... Nice impression. I want you to remember that my tag, know roughly where you're going to place your tag so that you know roughly where to um, stamp out your sentiment. So I know I want it up in that top corner because obviously if you just stamp randomly, you're not going to see any of it. So you want to know that you're going to be able to see some of the text. You're obviously not going to be able to read it perfectly, but you can place some so that you can see the whole meaning, the whole wording on the stamp. So it's a really good idea to keep, keep putting your stamp, your tag, back over. Good idea to stamp on and off your tag. Uh, sorry, on and off your paper as well. Just adds interest to it. So you're just going to see snippets of it <clears throat> on your bit of background paper. Obviously, because your tag's going to cover a lot of it. But just make sure that it's showing you different parts of that text. So just moving my bit of paper over. And stamping down so now I can put my tag back on and if I'm happy that there's enough stamp in there then that's it that's fine okay so I'm going to take my piece of paper out. now when I've stamped because I haven't got a piece of paper in my back of my um, oh, stamping platform what I would do and it'd be much easier if I just put a piece of paper in there but if you just spritz it actually I can see now how that's really shown up where the stamping is. Then all I do is I spritz it with some water and take my cloth and just wipe away all that ink. So now if when I come to do a card next time, I'm not going to have a, an inky, inky background on the back of my card. So I put my press to one side. 
I've got my piece of paper. So what I did then was I just went around the edge. Again, I'm using Ground Espresso just because it's a really nice dark brown and it does actually show when you've got your picture all assembled. So you can see that ink around the edge. So again, if you find it easier doing it with blending tools and doing it like down on the work surface, then there's no right or wrong way. It's however you find it comfortable to do. But I must admit, I find it much easier to do if I'm holding it. And I hold the sponge at an angle and that way you get nice soft edges. You can bring more ink in if you want to come in wider, but I'm not going to because I haven't done that on any of the others. So I don't, I want my three pictures to look very similar. Okay, so I think I'm happy with how that's looking and with my tag as well on there. I hope the sun isn't too bright and blinding you so you can see it. Right, so. So the next thing, so I'm happy with that. Now I've die cut, what I tend to do now is I open my picture up and take everything out. And what I tend to do is I tend to flip this all over. I keep it in case I ever want the perspex, but because I want it to be a frame where it can stand proud, I just put everything back into the frame and put those <coughs> pieces back down. So that's holding it all in place. Now I've got my, I then know what area I'm working with. Cause if you start sticking things down and you can put it too close to the edge cause that's where the paper comes up to here, then it's no good when you put it in the frame. So I would always put it into the frame and then you know exactly where, where your, um, everything is positioned. So I've taken a bit of garden string and just added that folded it in half, pop, pop the loop through and then pull the ends through the loop and I'll neaten them off later. Now you could put that on with foam pads and that would be absolutely fine. What I've been tending to do is I've been using scrap pieces of card which I'm just trying to find. There we go. So I made some cards a long time ago and I stamped things on them and I haven't used them. So I'm going to be using these as my scrap piece of card and instead of using foam pads, because I want this to be nice and sturdy, although it is pretty, it's a good weight anyway, but if I use um, my cards and trim this down, I want to trim this down to seven and a half because that's the width of my tag and then to about 14. These pieces here I will keep because they're brilliant to stamp sentiments onto. So I'll put them in my scraps box and trim this down again. So seven and a half and then down to 14. So it doesn't matter if you've got any scrap card that you may be stamped and got wrong, don't throw it away because this is a really good way of using up those scraps without wasting it. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually glue these together <clears throat> and put these behind my tag to act like foam pads to give me a bit of dimension so that when I put this on my, my, pit, my tag in my picture, I've got all the depth of that card, which is acting like a foam pad. So it's a really good way, but that way the whole tag will be nice and sturdy. So when I'm adding my flowers or my letters, it's not going to warp if I haven't got foam pads exactly in the right place and things like that. So just a bit of glue. Sorry, I think I went out of shot a little bit there. Sorry. And I'm lining this up. It's really strange because when I do these videos now, I stand up and do them. And obviously I don't normally craft standing up. No, just a bit, bit strange. I have to remember to craft around the phone. <laughs> That's sticking in my face. But never mind. Okay, so this was another great tip that I learned from Jennifer Jennifer Maguire. She does this with her sentiments as well. So to ensure that she gets nice strips all the way across and even on her thin sentiments, 
she actually, instead of using foam pad now, uses strips of card that she keeps from when she's trimmed things down and layers that onto the back of her sentiment. And then that way you get really nice, even support behind it. And it is a great way to use up your scraps, so you're right. Okay, so then I'm going to put this down on the back of my tag. So now it's making the whole tag stable and ready to take those flowers and the word in. But it's nice and dimensional as well, so it's bringing it up to the same level as the edge of my frame. So it's a really clever technique, that. So just put some glue on the back here and then position my tag. And I'm pushing it towards the left and I've done that the same on each of the tags so I obviously want it to be consistent whether you display these as individuals or you put them together doesn't really matter okay so I'm sorry about the sun but that's that's it bit better you can see there so that's the base of my picture which is ready um, I wanted to take a chipboard heart that I found in my stash and I'm going to cover that with some pattern paper so just trim that down a little bit. So I'm going to put some glue on here and I'm actually going to put this on and leave it to dry while I do some flowers. And then I'll come back to it because it's much better to cut out once it's dried. What glue do I use? I use Honeydew Sticky Glue. And I noticed they were on the television the other day and they have a larger bottle at last, which I must invest in because I actually think their glue is absolutely brilliant. It's I don't have any problems with it blocking. Um, it's better if you put the lid on, obviously, but then all glue would be better if you put the lids on. Um, yeah, Honeydew, Honeydew Crafts, they're called, and it's sticky. It's www.honeydewcrafts.co.uk and sticky glue, and I can highly recommend it. In fact, I think Kay is watching. So there's a good plug for Kay and Amanda. It's great glue. I love it. Right, so I have some flowers which I have stamped and die cut because it obviously takes a little bit of time and I didn't want you to be sitting there, you know, watching me do lots of die cutting. So I've done it previously. And the thing that I did to the flowers on the other pictures was I wanted to give them a little bit of brown around the edge just to give them an aged look. And it, I think it just really worked really well with the, the papers and doing the inky backgrounds and the stamping as well, because I did that in the brown too. So literally just taking a sponge and you can put as much brown ink on them as you want. You can keep them clean if you want to. You could do this onto a white a white tag and have a completely different look, but using the same papers. But I just fancied going in with a, a little bit more, not me, I don't want to say mixed media, but I suppose it is a little bit. So just inking up all of my flowers. I just do it around the edges, bring it into the petals just a little bit. And I've got a nice lot of flowers ready, stamped and die cut. So anyone who's ordered them, they are winging their way to us as we speak. So hopefully the shipment will arrive any day and uh, we will be getting your orders out to your oh, lovely Paula will. She's so good. She set up a little packing station in her in her house ready to go so we can get all your orders out to you. So I'm nearly there. I've done a nice lot of flowers. Obviously you want a lot. Um, always better to do too many because you don't have to use them all, but it can be really annoying if it's, oh, I've just got to cut a few more or I've just run out of that bit of paper. So if you die cut what you've got from any papers that you might have left, then at least you know what you've got to play with. Okay. Oh my goodness, there's lots under here. Okay. I was keeping them separate because I'd actually pre-laid this out and I knew which was going to be at the top of the picture and what was going to be down below. So it's always good... I'll, I'll go through that in a minute, actually. I won't just stick them on. So I'll talk through that because that's quite important about trying to get things to lay nicely and to, like the design element of it so that it's all looking pleasing and good on the eye. So just a couple of leaves. I didn't worry about putting any leaves on the more... Sorry, any ink on the more delicate leaves. I just added a little bit to the bigger ones I think I oh know it's a couple more there one more okay right so 
that is all the ink done. So what I would do next, oh, I've got filthy hands. And I haven't got any, I don't think, oh, I'm not sure if I've got any wipes. Right, bear with me a minute. I'm just going to put some water on them and try and get some of this off. That's better. Makes a change when we're at the workshops and everyone else is getting grubby. <laughs> okay, so see you later, Hazel. Enjoy your lunch or your dinner. I know that Paul makes a lovely roast, so I hope he's cooked you a roast dinner. So I am just cutting in to all of my petals because I want to curl and shape them and add some dimension to them. So just with my scissors, just going down towards the centre. I'm not going right into the middle, but just down towards the centre. And then with my pokey tool, I'm going to curl all of the petals back. And then I'm going to go around with my thumb and my nail and I'm going to lift these up. So at the moment you can see, whoops, you can see it's very laid back, isn't it? So then if I bring my thumb in and pinch against my fingers, just inside that centre piece, you will see that the petals now are nice and upright. So just by doing that with my fingers, that pulls those petals up. I'm going to do the same with the little flowers. And this is going to be a little bit boring for you because I've got all of them to do. So I'm sorry about that. So again, just snip in, curl and shape, bring them round. This time I lift them up as I go so you've got some nice dimension to them. So again, almost to the centre, obviously not cutting right into the centre, but just almost to the centre. And then we can curl and shape. The petals. Okay, just keep going. I should have had some done, shouldn't I? So, have all of you been crafting? Have you been keeping busy trying to uh, create something? If anybody makes anything, please put a hashtag or copy me in. I only discovered the other day that I could see all the people that had posted on my page, so I do apologise. I hadn't seen a lot of them. So yeah, if you've got, I'd love to see what you've been making. Even if it's not using my products, I still love to see what you're doing. So with the little ones again, just cutting into the middle there. Right down almost to the centre and curling and shaping them. So then I'll I'll do the um, layout the design bit next. So I'll lay show you how I decide where I'm going to put things, and then I will cut the rest of the petals and the other flowers as I need them because I want to have some flowers. I wanted to change the um, orientation of the pictures. I'll explain that when I show you them all together. So curling and shape. So I've got those flowers ready. Right, so, yes, I'm sure it's keeping lots of people sane at the moment. Okay, I'm going to find my craft knife, because I haven't used a craft knife in a while. There it is. Okay, so I like to trim round my um, covered chipboard with a craft knife. I find it much, much easier. So, I am going to rest my craft knife against the edge of the piece of chipboard and just pull my knife back, do a little bit at a time, each time turning the chipboard a little bit, but keeping that knife at a 40, is it 45? Yeah, 45 degree angle, or is it a 90? God, that shows how good my maths is, I'm not sure. Anyway, at an angle, <laughs> upright. <laughs> Okay, all the way round, and you'll feel it when it's cut through. And so then you have a really nice crisp edge to it. When you cut something out, it because you're cutting from behind, you're cutting down. So now this will be uh, the cut will be up. So if you put the put the piece of um, chipboard down and just run your nail over the top of it, it will smooth that back around the chipboard, so that now. 
that cut line is going down and it gives you such a lovely neat edge to it really does finish it off beautifully okay so the composition of the piece so I want to bring this in so when I did the hope my idea was that I'm going to put these together so I want faith hope and love so the love is going to go here in fact let's put it there so I had decided sorry need the bits out of the way so I can pop it down so you can see them all can't you okay so I've got some flowers top and bottom on this one some flowers just in the middle on this one and then I'm going to have my my love word which is going to go in a similar sort of position to the others so they've all been sort of in line I think I might bring this down just a little bit and then I had I'm going to have a big flower at the bottom hang on let me get all my bits out from underneath that's it I'm going to put my heart my love is going to go over my heart so that's really going to draw your eye to it then I'm going to have the orange flower at the, the base I always have the smaller flowers towards the top because they are lightest if you like the bigger flowers are always heavier so they should really come below and then I'm going to pop some leaves in here and don't forget because I did the leaves go in both ways we can have the leaves coming out in both directions and then I have for the top I have another flower so I'm going to have my big yellow one so I'm just cutting into my petals because when you curl and shape the petals it makes the flowers quite a bit smaller so sometimes when you're doing it you might think oh I can't get all those flowers in but once you've curled and shaped them you actually make them quite a bit smaller in size so so this can go that was going to go up the top maybe we'll have these actually as well I do love this leaf lovely and I like it overhanging so it goes off the tag or onto the frame I really love how that looks got a couple of the other leaves as well so I was going to pop those at the top there we could have one two down here as well so it's really good just to lay this out and then I probably will just have those I think that'll be enough so laying it out first is a really good idea then I know what it's going to look like with the other two if I put them all together so that you can see that as well and they all go in line they've all got the blues they've all got that lovely orange and they've all got that mustard so I'm really happy with that layout like that so if I pop these to one side again and I can do a bit of glue in now so I've just got these two let's take those bits off I'm going to show you about my letters as well so I've just got these two flowers still to cut into and curl and shape I should have bought a cup of tea with me shouldn't I gasping <laughs> anyone want to put the kettle on hi Sam how lovely that you could join us hi Denise that's so lovely I'm so pleased that so many people have joined us on a Sunday afternoon at such short notice as well that's lovely okay so curling and shaping these flowers and I'm gonna have this one up the top there and then just my orange one oh waiting for your parcel to come oh bless you I can't wait to see what you all make with them when they do arrive okay so now I'm going to start gluing bits in place so I would probably glue my heart in place first of all because I want to make sure that that you can see that and I would I wouldn't put it like that I really like it if it's just over a little bit to me it's then on the tag yeah for me that just looks nicer nothing's right or wrong it's your picture if you make one that's so entirely up to you but I like it just on the tag a little bit more but just hanging off the edge slightly 
So I can firm that down. So now I know where my letters are going to go. So the next thing I would do is pull these leaves out of the way and the flowers back a little bit. And I'm going to place the big flower down first of all. So nice lot of glue on the back. I would overhang the tag because I want it to overhang onto my background paper. Then with the leaves, I tend to just curl these just over, curl the end one, and then I put some glue just on those bottom two leaves and then I tuck that behind my flower. Actually, I can put it onto the paper, the backing paper. That's it. I want it to, to poke. I want it to be proud of my flower. So again, just some glue on those bottom leaves and then I will tuck that just underneath slightly but again I love it if it can touch the edge of the frame it just draws your eye into it being um, like that you just see the frame better really when I do the solid leaves I just curl them over but then I bend back a piece so that I've got an area that I can put some glue on and then I can just tuck it underneath the petals so again just curl it up and then just put a real kink in it so you've got that lovely flat bit and then you've got somewhere to put some glue and you know that way it's going to stick nicely just using your pokey tool to hold it down for a few seconds so i was going to have one of the orange flowers over here with the orange paper i need to make sure i get the words up the right way but i'm just going to tuck it behind oh i don't want to lose the edge of that heart maybe i just put it there actually because i don't want to lose the bottom of my heart okay so again with the blue papers that i've chosen this has wording on it as well so again make sure you get your wording up the right way before you stick it down and don't be afraid to tuck it underneath the petals as well remind me of your website uh you can find the there are pictures images of the stamps and products to look at but it's a trade only website but you will then find links to stockists on the stockist page so the website is sweethoneydesigns.com and if you go on there you can see the products but you can't buy them from there you have to then go to the stockist page and there are links on the stockist page that will take you to um, craft stash to the art of crafts to the mulberry bush to dragon's paper craft to who else i don't want to forget anyone sharon at the craft cabin but everybody is listed up on there who is stocking it oh and her chander of course so i'm just curling my last bit of the leaves and again just some glue behind and i'll just tuck that under the blue flower a little bit and then I'm going to place my yellow flower down first of all up here so we'll always do the biggest one the, the focal point of your flower first sorry your focal point flower first okay so then I'm going to bend these up oh and Hixie Soft sorry I forgot <gasps> that's really very naughty of me so Hixie Soft as well have them but everybody is listed on the the website i hope i didn't f forget anybody else if i did i really do apologize but it's really quite hard demoing talking reading <laughs> still we can multi-cart task can't we okay so tucking that flower behind i should have one more oh that one was going to go up there see this is the thing i do but look if you're careful you can still pull it off. I can pop that flower down in its place. And I want an orange one because I wanted it to be one of each colour. So pop that up there. Make, oh, I haven't glued that one down yet. That's good. So again, just curling the leaves up. And then a bit of glue just on those bottom two. And I can tuck that just behind that one. And then my last flower up the right way. Tuck it underneath a little bit. 
Okay, so when I come to do my wording, I like to have make my letters dimensional. I don't know if you'll be able to really tell. <clears throat> but they're quite thick, even before I put the glossy accents on them. So what I do, and I've done all of them except for the L, because I wanted to show you what I did. So they're all going to be ready to go on there. So I've die cut two white ones and one coloured one. And I did this out of the plain card, so I used the back of the card, but I stamped part of my border stamp on that one, as you can see. Yep, I sometimes take a photo as well, and then I know where I've placed everything. That's a really good tip, that one. So if you lay everything out and you love how it looks, take a photograph, then you can move it all off, and you've got a photograph of the placement of everything. And because sometimes it's really hard to get it to look as good. So, yeah, so if, if you're happy, like if you lay it all out and you're happy with it, great idea to take a photograph. Okay, so I'm going to start... Sticking my E down first of all. And I've only put glue on part of it because I want it to overhang a little bit. So I'm going to have it overhanging the edge of my heart. Then some glue on the V. And lots of you were asking how I got them to be lovely and glossy. There's several ways you could do it. I did it with glossy accents, but you could do it with um, embossing powder. So you could do it with clear embossing. Let's glue that down and then glue this one down. Um, but I actually did it, I did do mine with glossy accents rather than clear embossing. But I always do everything, things like that last, which lots of people like, look at me, are you mad? But I always do that bit, the very last thing, then I can put it to one side and it can dry. So I'm going to put pearls like I have in the other ones in the centres of all my biggish flowers so not the little tiny ones but in the centers of all the others I put pearls and I'm actually wishing that I'd colored them a little bit don't worry about if the glue spurts out because it will dry clear so don't worry about that so just popping these all down into the middles And then I've got, for the little flowers, I found some gorgeous sparkly ones that I had left over from something else that I bought. But, oh, these are just so pretty. They really are. So these ones I'm going to put in the centres of the little flowers. So just those three there. And I always, even if everything is self-adhesive, when I'm making a picture, I always add glue as well and the reason I do that is because when a picture is hanging up getting dusty and all that the glue is one of the first or the self-adhesive elements are one of the first things to give up the ghost of the glue like with the heat and everything from people's houses the glue on ad adhesive elements gives up the ghost so really good idea to put extra glue down okay to finish off I went in with some Nouveau Drops and this one is Crystal Drops Pale Gold because this was a lovely... Oh, actually, before I do that, I'm actually going to... I added three of the little Art Cuts hearts. I just love these. Beautiful. Go check Art Cuts out. Gorgeous little wooden shapes. Beautiful little embellishments. So I have put three on each picture. So I'm just going to take three little hearts. Now, when I what I decide where I want these is I want them to draw your eye to the word love. So I'll have one there. I'll have one. No, I think I have one up there. I'll have one towards the bottom of the L, actually. And then... Hmm... Maybe we'll put it there. That's it. So I'm going to put them there. OK, so glue those down. A little bit of glue. Excuse my head if it gets in the way. So just a little bit of glue. And then they have like a, a almost like a burnt side where they're laser cut because they're so little. 
some of the wood gets a little bit burnt but I, I just love it so then I'm going to go in and I've just added little accent drops I need to get the Nuvo drops done because running out now so I just go round and add maybe a couple of drops to my flowers just around the elements that I want to draw your eye to maybe have a couple on the petals and my Nuvo drops is really old I have to say so what I tended to do is if I get points I just tap it down a little bit and the points disappear okay so we'll have a couple on the paper as well so if you do find you're getting like almost tips to it if you just tap it they go rounded again it's ever so clever okay so I think I'm quite happy with that I've obviously put my finger in it somewhere can't see that I have so that's okay so then to finish the very last thing is my glossy accents so all I do and I hope you can see this is I'm going to squeeze I knew it would be blocked up I don't think I've ever used this bottle and it hasn't been blocked up there's a little bit inside that dries and can I get it to come out so all I do is push it out of the way and then it comes back in again in a minute but we'll see how we do nope <laughs> so bear with me I need to treat myself to another bottle of this as well I'm getting very low now come on glossy oh here we go right so you're going to squeeze gently and maneuver it with the nozzle to the edges so I don't squeeze any more when I'm trying to move it around so I put some down and then I use the nozzle very very gently squeezing to move that around because I don't it actually comes out with gravity so if I held it like this it will start to drip eventually so just very gently using that nozzle just to move it around to the edges and then we'll have lovely dimensional letters you need to leave this flat to dry in this sunshine it'll probably take about I'd probably leave it for a good hour because it's very tempting to put your finger in it and you mustn't because you'll ruin it so let me move everything out of the way so we have love sorry about the sun coming through the my window oh you know what I could have done don't you I could have opened the window and then we wouldn't have had the in fact hang on a minute if I push the window open there look we get rid of the lines from my window so we have love no faith hope and love which I think we need all of them at the moment. Yes, I need to do that, Neil. I need to take the nozzle off of the glossy accent and put it in a cup of hot water while I have a cup of tea and then it would clean the nozzle out properly. You're absolutely right, I should. So I hope you've enjoyed that. It was really lovely to have your company while I made that. Um, I'm trying to think what to do with them. I'm actually loving them. I don't know whether I want to put them up at home or whether I want to offer them up as a, a giveaway. But maybe I need to live with them for a couple of days and then, then maybe we'll, we'll do a giveaway with them. In fact, I think we will. But I'll live with them for a little while because they've, the words actually mean quite a lot at the moment. So, <clears throat> yeah. Right. Before we go, I want to show you something else as well. So I'm going to put these out of the way, being very careful with my loved one because that is still wet. So I will put that to one side. And I wanted to show you something else. One of the ladies today asked about the cards that I did. I did a little care package for my mum um, because she hasn't got the new stamps yet. So I took her... An assortment of cards that I had stamped so that she could colour them and then turn them into cards and I did this one and lady asked me how I'd done the square 
So I was going to quickly show you, because it's ever so easy. I was going to quickly show you how I did that. So let's just grab my stamp. I do think that this border stamp is actually turning out to be probably one of my favourite stamps I've ever had. <laughs> which is lovely. So I've got a six by six card and I'm going to pop that down into my press. Thank you, Joe. Thank you for all the lovely comments. And I will, I will go back and have a cup of tea and read them all. But so let me show you how I did this. So I'm going to place my flower down on my card leaving a nice border along the top so it's not right up against the edge or anything so then I'm going to pick my stamp up and you'll notice that my the double lines don't always go straight so a good tip is because I've got this on my board I can lay it on my board and just check that those end of the pieces are straight actually I don't need that for this one but if you were doing it as a border stamp <laughs> <laughs> okay so what I'm going to do and I'm going to bring the inking bit back in is I am only going to ink as far up as the edge of the three dots so you've got little three dots at the end here on the design I'm only going to ink up to there so there is no ink on this part of the stamp at all so now when I stamp this down I can open my press up I've got the the border stamp but without that end line I can turn my card and I can ink again again only inking up to those three dots so no ink on this part again and stamp that out turn it around you're getting the gist aren't you so just up to those three dots Do you know what? It's lovely now the sun's come out and I've got the window wide open. It's beautiful. OK, just up to those three dots. Oops. And stamp that down. So now we have a square using the frame. So just a different way to use my border stamp. So instead of creating the frames, which I think actually these look very different to think that that's from the same stamp you know it is very different so it does show how versatile it is so I actually did some for me um, as a little care package to myself <laughs> for me to take up to the house just with my coloring pens and I was gonna color them in and I've die cut lots of thanks from a die that I had previously but I might actually do them out of my letters and I'm gonna color them in and I'm going to take them to the supermarket with me and also to my postman who has carried on delivering everything to me. So just to show that I really appreciate what everyone's doing at the moment. OK, the other thing I wanted to show you was I wondered if it might be nice to have a Facebook Live where I've used something that we already have. So you might already have these at home. So maybe I could do a Facebook Live with these tomorrow or Tuesday, yeah, Monday or Tuesday before your stamps arrive just to give you a little Facebook live of doing something a little bit different but with stuff that you actually might already have if you're interested so if you tell me yes you'd like to make these know how to make these cards or whether you don't want to make these cards <laughs> but let me know and uh, we could do a Facebook live but well Maxine wants to make them <laughs> Thank you, lovely. Oh, look, look at all those hearts and everything now. Fab. Um, this was actually going to be for a workshop. And as I've had to cancel my workshops, then let's let's do these. And uh, so I'll, I'll put up on Facebook when we're going to do them. But it'll be Monday or Tuesday and maybe during the day because, you know, I'm around and not got a lot to do. OK. All right. Let me flip you back. Bear with me a minute. Oops. Yay! Sorry, I didn't mean to be quite so full on in your face. Oh, I look weird. 
<laughs> that light spooky <laughs> okay so i hope you've enjoyed it thank you ever so much for joining me and uh i will see you again in the beginning of the week okay take care and stay safe everyone okay bye